do ba do 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 sharky breath. He plays video games. Hi, welcome back to Disco Elysium. Have I been calling the Wompty Dompty Dom Center the Lompty Dompty Dom Center for like 30 episodes <laughs> or something? How did that happen? How did that get converted inside my brain? Uh, I was having a look through my thoughts because I did just get a couple more and I also haven't finished out Cold Mama Dakwa. So I'm trying to figure out where I can cram a couple more thoughts in. It does seem likely that I'm going to have to dispose of Arno Van Eyck. Seeing the gig posters in the world is neat, but it doesn't have any intrinsic benefits to me, I guess you could say, aside from just being like, oh yeah, he was here at some point, you know? Which is neat. It is neat that he was here. But having noted that he's here and seen it in various places around, I suspect there's not going to be any more to it, but I don't know. Also, when I got the Jamrock Shuffle, I don't think I ever actually read it. Did I? No, I did read this. Never mind, I absolutely read this. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm making things up. Don't you worry about that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, did I actually make a decision? Mm, not really, huh? Oh, that's the other thing, right? There's also the... Okay. So, in terms of thoughts I can get rid of, Cop of the Apocalypse is a tricky one. Because on the one hand, Inland Empire and Shivers... I've got one in each of them, so chances are I'm not going to hit the point where I reach the max, right? But if I drop that particular thought, Shivers drops to a max of two, and Inland Empire drops to a max of three, and that's not super promising if I get, you know, pinned in some sort of situation coming up. I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, of course. And Shivers might be okay as long as I keep the bow collector around, but, like, I don't know, <laughs> genuinely. And then there's, like, actual art degree. I could get rid of it if I want to have a decent chance of succeeding at that red check for the uh, rich guy. But I could also just go over there and fail it flagrantly. That's just a decision I have to make, and I unfortunately haven't made that decision yet. But then Wompty Dompty Dom, right? I like the experience boost, but... If I'm remembering correctly, again, this is this is knowledge I shouldn't have since I shouldn't have finished out this thought, but if I'm remembering correctly, Cold Mama Doc was actually going to reduce my capacity for Encyclopedia anyway. Given that, well, I guess I don't know for a fact that I won't need any more money in this game, but, like, it seems likely that I've bought most of the stuff that there is to buy, as far as I can tell. It may be that getting rid of Wompty Dompty, Womp, Wompty Dompty, <laughs> Wompty Dom. It, it's maybe a good idea to get rid of that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Those are the best choices I think I have at the moment. I'm not getting rid of Wasteland of Reality. Guillaume Le Million is tempting, but that one extra on Psyche. It's. Well, I mean, it means that I have one more space in empathy if I need it, and it also means that if I do wind up getting rid of a cop of the apocalypse, at least I can raise Inland Empire by one if I need to. Eh. I should have sorted this out before I started the episode, huh? Yeah, well, let me fit sort it out now. Admittedly, it may also be worth considering getting rid of hardcore aesthetic, huh? Since all it is is a plus one to endurance and volition, which under normal circumstances would probably be really good, but I'm a weirdo who went ahead and maxed out my volition and endurance pretty early on, so I probably don't need to be at seven of each, right? Particularly given that I have restoratives. I have five and six restoratives. I'm fine on that front. Maybe that is the thing to do. Maybe that's the play for right now. Since I'm not sure which particular option I want to shut out, maybe I should just dispose of the hardcore aesthetic and go from there. If something happens that's going to kill me at six, it would kill me at seven as well, is what I'm thinking. Like, having that one extra in there is probably not going to save my life, I wouldn't think. You know? You know, it's probably fine. I'm sure people have made it this late in the game with like three or four in both of these, and I'm sh I'm sure that six is just as good as seven, right? Right? Uh, yep. It's fine. 
It's fine. Okay, so then what are we going to sub in? Do we finish out Cold Mamadakwa? It'll be done within three hours, which is... Is that still today? Hang on, what time is it? It's eight o'clock! Wow! The day has rushed by, hasn't it? Okay, okay. Do we want to start something a little bit shorter then? Jamrock to... Jam... <laughs> Sorry, I was... The Jamrock Shuffle, I was combining Jamrock to... I was going to say Jamrock to Shuffle, is what I was going to say. It's the diff from Esprit de Corps. I, I, I don't know why that happened. Don't worry about it. Um, it only takes an hour and five minutes. Slightly less relatable as a police officer because of my confusing behavior. Let's do this. I don't know if it's a good idea, but it's what I'm doing. Okay, all right, great. We did that. Now then, where does that leave us? I think that leaves us where we're going and talking to people in the fishing village, right? Unless there's something I'm entirely forgetting about, but I don't think there is, so let's head over that direction. Okay. Also remember that Joyce is around here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Joyce sure is around here somewhere. She has pulled her yacht in over here, and she's even gotten out of it for once. Interesting. You have anything to say about this? Hi. Been a while. Oh, the sea's going to calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? She doesn't have anything to say about Joyce's presence. It doesn't affect her in the least. <laughs> Look at that. We're honest about document documents. Plus two. Plus one carrying the amber dye. Minus one Kim's present make it awkward, but it's still a 3% because my suggestion is zero. Uh, I have to think about real hard about whether I want to pursue that tonight, because if I do, I pretty much have to stop having Wompty Dumpty Dom Center in my mind, huh? Probably. Hello, Joyce. I'll just keep the Cordelechi in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Why are you asking me? It's not like I have any authority over that. She winds the mooring line around a post. You do that, I guess, Joyce. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Oh, she was talking to Lillian. I was interrupting. Got it. Continue. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to appear any day. Jet, jet, jetty. She definitely knows exactly what she's talking about. Continue. Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. <laughs> j j j jetty jetty <laughs> Hello, ma'am. Leave. <laughs> we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Oh, Jetty, oh, Jetty. She responds mournfully. Continue. It's good to see you here, detectives. I only just arrived myself. She responds mournfully, then secures the mooring line. Okay, continue. What brings you here, madame? Continue. Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this Jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. You had... How many weeks to think about this? And you just happened to show up over here once we came over here to pursue leads about Ruby being over here. Yeah, it's definitely a coincidence. No correlation. Continue. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. No kidding. Have you been spying on us? So how do you like it here? Look around. Of course she's been spying on us. Is this even a question worth asking? Well, I'm gonna do it anyway. Spying has such a negative connotation. I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Now of all times. Sure. You realize I can fast travel anywhere I want instantaneously in-game, yeah? Mm, whatever, continue. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordelate she read. Like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. I'm sure you do. So, Cindy. I mean, yeah, you did have some interactions with Cindy, I guess. Did you actually get her to come down out of her balcony? Because I kind of doubt she did that. She seems to be up there all the time. 24-7. So how do you like it here? Look around. Hmm. How do I like it? Probably not very much, I guess. She casts her gaze toward the village. Slush melting on the cinder blocks. Construction work left half-finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of Eternite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. Mm -hmm. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. Apparently it was harder to smell the salt and the dog shit than hear those other things. Continue. It's pornographically poor. The mm -hmm. street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? She squints her eyes. Yes, I know nothing about it. Continue. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Great. 
So you're very nervous about your welfare, despite the fact that this is just like several minutes walk away and always has been. Well, whatever. Fine, continue. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull gray metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Or so we're assuming. Continue. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. And we're historically very good at making people not get stabbed. Continue. All right. Politics time. Let's react. Uh, okay, rhetoric. So what do we got? You're right to be scared. This is all your fault. You're in no danger. Which the, lower, the working class have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. This, the place is doomed either way. Say nothing. Ah, so what parts of my brain are reacting here? That is probably communism brain, right? That could be liberal, uh, ultra-liberal, or it could be fascist. I'm not sure. Try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. Though that could also be the communist one, though. Hmm. Because, let's see here. If we say it's all her fault, like, that's, that's a distribution of wealth accusation for sure, right? How the real city looks. Hmm. This, the place is doomed either way. No, that, see, that's, a, that's a, probably Apocalypse Cop stepping in. Ostensibly, this could be moralism, maybe? I don't know. Moralists don't typically have much patience for ultra-liberals, which is what she is, of course. Um, and then, of course, the option of not not doing at all what rhetoric said to do. Okay, all right. I guess I'm going to go with this one. This is it just how the real city looks? Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... She leans against the railing, looking up at the great sky, great, the gray sky, rather. Continue. Above you, there forms a quilt of alto cumulus clouds, twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. I don't know what an alto, alto cum, I don't know what an alto cumulus looks like off the top of my head. I wish I could actually look up. Hmm. Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. I'm sure that is true. The ruins of Revachol West. I mean, I guess they are that, aren't they? People still live here, but it it is fairly well ruined. Some decades after the revolution. Continue. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The wind picks up. Her raincoat flaps in the gust. This fishing village? This island? This is Sola? I'm going to be dumb. I'm going to do the dumb one. No. They're in Celindian, Isola. No, you haven't told me how they found it. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. I have no doubt you're correct on that. Um, 45%, oof. Oblivion, that's so me! 45% is around where I operate. Things are getting better, though. Say nothing. <sighs> I guess 45% seems about right. <laughs> but things are getting better. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. She nods. Continue. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? She corrects the scarf around her neck. Um, tell me now. We have time. Tell me something else, then. Well, it was good running into you. Uh, t t tell, tell me now? Do we? He glances at his watch. It doesn't look like he does. I, I see. Well, that's fair. It is past eight o'clock. Continue. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. Hmm, but I would. Continue. This story she will tell. Only before she leaves Martinez. Oh. At the very end of her stay. So that's just yet to come. All right. 
Understood, I guess. Continue. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with, while you're hot in pursuit? I don't think so, given that none of these are lit up in any particular fashion. Now, sometimes there are new options inside a subcategory, but... Well, I guess I have been dealing with Evrardigan. Do I have anything more to say on that front? Oh. Ma'am, this whole thing is a takeover. Mr. Evrard helped me find my gun. I helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. I didn't. <laughs> I specifically didn't. I turned down the heat on the borscht, so to speak. Aside from which, isn't borscht supposed to be served cold or something? This whole thing is a takeover. That's got to be the, the fishing village thing, right? What I declined to tell the government about? I guess I could tell Joyce instead. A takeover? Yes, it's not a strike. Oh, that! Right, yeah, the whole the whole motivation behind Everard's movement. It's not a strike. You aren't being let in because there's nothing to negotiate. The Union is taking over, taking the terminal. He has told me so in his own words. He's taking it. He'll also use the drug trade to finance the harbor, although I have supposedly talked him out of that, but I kind of don't imagine that he, you know, is going to budge on that front, despite what he said. Um, I'm going to go with the top one, because, again, he did say he wasn't necessarily going to do the drug thing. If they're taking it... She looks towards the colorful mountain of crates, like toy blocks rising above Martinez. Green livery, changing into red, blot by blot. Uh-huh, you can even see it from here, huh? Continue. Like a cancer of the blood, metastasizing. <laughs> That's a heck of a way to look at it. Continue. Then we're talking about a war. Evrat needs to let me into the harbor at once. We need to talk about this. He's ready for a war. They all are. I can ask him to let you in. <sighs> he specifically said it was okay to tell you this because there's nothing you can possibly do at this juncture, but... Is this actually declining to let... To, 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 to try and get Everard to let her in? I don't know that it's going to serve any purpose to have Everard let her in, but... He did specifically mention he was ready for war, or preparing for such, so... <clears throat> they most certainly are not. Cronell has a thousand men on their payroll. The next batch will be a platoon of twenty men and a gunship. Her eyes return to you. Okay, that's, um, significantly an issue. Continue? I've seen the Union's forces. They are better organized than these mercenaries. They also have the support of the people of Revachol West. And that is worth something, but it will still be really messy. Continue? It will take more than Cronell to wipe them out. Wild Pines will need to send more and better equipped men. Make no mistake, ma'am. Continue. I am sure you have the money. The question is, how many years and how many lives are you willing to sacrifice? That is the question. And Everard is super aware of how bad this is going to make you look, and has calculated that into his machinations. Continue. What do you suggest I do? First, will this affect your decision-making process? It's not the RCM's job to make these decisions. The workers should have the harbor. Cut off the snake's head. Everard's pushing all this. It's a bluff. Call it. Have them open fire and see how long they last. Bring in everything you have and wipe them from the face of the earth. Look at your wrist. It's apocalypse o'clock. Time to commence the gloaming. I wish there was a disco option. <laughs> well, let's do the first thing. Everything affects the decision-making process, detective. Continue. Officer. The look on the lieutenant's face conveys uncertainty. He doesn't even sound angry. <sighs> wow, this is an important thing to be asking me an opinion about, huh? I'm sure Kim would definitely back me up if I were to say that it's not the RCM's job to make these decisions, but I... I also suspect that if I say that, it'll be a stalling option and it'll dump me back into the same menu. That's backing the Union. That's... telling her to assassinate Evrard, which is sure something. That will start the war. Straight up. They will... <sighs> if they try... It's, it's not a bluff, as far as I can tell. It's not a bluff, as far as I can tell. Um, Kill everyone. Everyone's gonna die anyway. Disco option. I'm really tempted to do the disco option thing. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. It's not our job to make these decisions, but it is our job to try and 
defend as many lives as possible, right? Particularly Martinet's lives. And this is going to end a lot of them if it takes off. So I don't know... We're supposed to maintain neutrality. But... Oh, boy. I don't like almost any of these options. But then nobody likes any of these options. What we're hoping to do is cut the whole thing off before it happens, but I'm not sure that's even going to be possible. I guess let's start here and see what happens. Of course. Your job is to clean up after them. And it looks like there will be a lot of cleaning to be done in the near future. <sighs> I guess that was the option. Like, that was the decision. Mm. So what are you going to do? What will I do? She says, slowly looking around. Her arms fall to her sides. Her spine relaxes. Continue? Did I ever tell you how they discovered this Isola? During our reality lowdown? The wind blows, waves crash in the distance. She crosses her arms and asks that. The fact that she's mentioning it again suggests that maybe she's going to leave? Like my Inland Empire suggested she might? You said you would one day. About ten minutes ago. It may be the only break we've ever caught as a species. The last one for 400 years. She nods. But why? The nations who colonized this Isola called theirs Moindi, the world. It was all they knew, all they thought would be. That there would be something more was a gamble, akin to another world, or life after death. Were we actively fleeing the Pale when we discovered this, or continue? The Pale was thought to be impregnable, perpetual. Irene la Navigateur, the Queen of Siren, sent eight expeditions, one after the other, into the mass at the edge of the world. Five of the crews did not return. Two did, but had lost their minds. She points northwest. Eight expeditions. Five... Okay, so seven of them were utter failures, and then the eighth one found... this Isola? Each of those expeditions would have been led by an admiral. Sounds like a purge. Like she was purging her political rivals. That does seem like to have some potential. Sounds cruel, sounds political. Uh, so that's the rhetoric option. Let's go with it. There was no precedent for such an undertaking. People thought she was punishing the admirals, or had gone mad, or both. Continue. Until after years of trial and error, and the development of a strict psychological regime imitating the creation process of poetry. Uh, c run that by me again? Years of trial and error and the development of a strict psychological regime imitating the creation process of poetry. A psychological... What? Continue? Called Volta Doma, or Return from the Sea. Return from the Sea. To explain? The eighth expedition returned sane and intact. They told of a new continent of matter. They told the Queen and her counselor, Dolores Day, that the Pale had begun to condense, day after day. Hour after hour, minute after minute. So Delor this was during Dolores Day's time that this was that this happened. They not only made it through the pale, but they made it back through the pale using this Volta do Mar thing, which I really want to know more about. Continue. Slowly raining down until it formed a vast ocean. Uh-huh. Continue. The air is cold and scented with petrichor. The snow just converted into rain. That seems... A little bit too much to be a coincidence, huh? Um, hmm. The pale formed a vast ocean. Continue. There are rain circles on water all around. Humidity crawls up your back like a piano trill. Wait a second. There are rain circles. Was that seriously? Is that scripted into this particular event that there must be rain happening? Put your hand in the rain. It seems like yes. So does the lieutenant. His mouth is slightly open. As he looks to the sky. Is the pale actually in the rain? Is that what you're suggesting? Continue. The droplets feel warm, like spring rain. This ocean? The phenomenon has never again been encountered. For a time, the crew thought they were experiencing a hallucination. The mass hand proclaimed, Lancelinde, Lancelinde, the signal to wake up. The signal to wake up, and that's what they named the Isola after. The ocean here is made out of the pale? Is that... Hang on. Condensing. 
slowly raining down until it formed a vast ocean. It's... How is... How is... How are we okay? Can we genuinely, like, what happens if someone tries to swim in this stuff? I've never seen anyone try, but, like, continue? But they could not. They were sane and conscious. As islands began to appear on the horizon, there are 78,000 uninhabited islands in the Insulindian archipelago, officer. The freckled face of God. Continue. You've thought it a million times. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. The pale is reforming the world after it unmakes everything? And we're on the other end of it? Then why is the swallow here? I'm gonna say it. A total shift in human comprehension of reality. On the second day, a great skewer was shot down above the flagship Lizargique. The bird was preserved and brought back, along with pollen. She nods. Um... Just as proof that the Isola exists, continue. Four years later, the Queen's Counselor was proclaimed her innocence, Dolores Day, the elected world spirit. The age of humanism, internationalism, and parliamentary rule followed. We were high. Leaving us here. The Great Skua was the bird they saw, and this was the last break we got. It's raining. What will you do? I mean, it seems only appropriate. We were high, leaving us here is to finish that particular thought. So we're starting there. On Caillou. The pebble. The largest of the fertile, uninhabited islands of the northeast Insulindian archipelago. Four centuries and two revolutions later. She studies your reaction. The great school was the first bird they saw? The first living, autonomous organism. Proof of reality. It's the symbol of Insulinde, Detective. The coat of arms of the suzerain and the wings on the crest of the commune. I seem to have it in for it. Or it for me. I broke one. Oh, right! The skua. Back in the whirling. Huh. In your defense, it is a nasty creature who plucks food from the throats of lesser birds. Yet much like Revachol, it is also magnificent and rare. Imagine the suzerain of seagulls. <laughs> That's a generous way to look at it, huh? So it's kind of a nasty bird, but it's very appropriately chosen is what you're saying. I feel like people have had similar reactions to discovering the true nature of the bald eagle, for example. Uh, and this was the last break we got? The nations of Mundi proceeded to discover five more Isile, or they discovered us. All in the rush of the great inter reconnection. Continue. But these others weren't uninhabited. We had to kill people there. Wipe out indigenous populations. Gunboat economies. Or they came to do the same for us. Or had done to each other. But here... She spreads her arms. Entirely uninhabited land. Just waiting to be found. Continue. There was no one but the skewer. The Liliat Sayer and the Blood Beach, and the River Esperance. It was the new, new world. The Mondials used it to amass the greatest concentration of wealth mankind has ever seen. Revachol, the Suzerain. Yeah, that sounds about right. What happened? Look around. Well done, Suzerain. Nod. I'm going with the what happened option. Revolution, poverty, and the mercurial rise of capitalism. She nods. It's raining. It is. Soon it will be spring and everything will blossom. She pulls the hood over her head. Continue. The gangs will run wild, taking motor carriages, ferrying amphetamines through Coal City. Spring is tough in Revachol. The lieutenant keeps his hand in the rain. Is that Does that happen every year around here? Just because the breaking of the cold makes it easier to navigate out there? Well, what will you do? I will surrender Terminal B to the Union. That's not what I was expecting you to say at all. Is that within your means? She puts her hand in the rain. She's silent for a second. That is ostensibly a way to avoid the war. But I have to imagine that somebody is going to want blood for this. But apparently it's not Joyce, maybe. Continue. We will see. I guess we will. Ma'am, 
This may well unravel property law this side of the river. If that occurs, we may never see the end of this kind of confrontation. The next time there will be two strikes, then four, then a hundred. He looks towards the harbor. I mean, you're maybe not wrong, Kim, but like, look at our alternatives. Continue. What happens will happen. She takes the end of her rain slick hand and starts untying the knot. She's about to leave. I chose the option that dismisses her first thing as soon as I saw her again. Dang it, Joyce, I'm sorry. The age of capital has only begun. I will talk to my employers in person. We will amputate and cauterize Martinez. If you handle the situation on the ground. You're going now? Rhetoric medium 10. We, she generally avoids that term with her employers, understood, let her go. I'm in a good position to make this red check, and I can't back out of this conversation to try it harder, so... If I say you're going now, do I get another chance to do this before I let her go? Yes, Mr. Clare has a two-month head start. I can't let it grow any bigger. And I've exhausted all my options from here. Right, okay, so rhetoric thing. She doesn't use the term we usually with her employers. Is she starting to... I don't know what that means. Let's find out what it means. There are no employers. She's a member of the board. Probably a partner. Oh. Always has been. She's just let it slip once now because the situation is so dire. You are the Wild Pines. There are no employers. You are the citizen's militia. There are no superiors. She turns to you, rope in hand. What? Of course I have superiors. I am. Nod. <sighs> I see where she's going with it. I have superiors, but I'm authorized to operate pretty much without checks while I'm out here. Like, at no point. Like, I've never even talked to my boss in as far as my memory extends. My partner, yes. The people back at the station, yes. But... As far as I know, I never have spoken to a superior. They let me operate entirely with my own... Uh, what's the word for it? Um, I can do whatever I want, essentially. <laughs> and have been doing whatever I want. So I guess I am? You're wrong, detective. And next time, you should confer with those superiors before you go setting events in motion. Hmm. Kim doesn't agree. Continue. Despite his words, he's not really sure whether to be annoyed with you or not. Fair. Continue. Events are already in motion. Whether your actions accelerated or momentarily retarded their progress, even the lieutenant cannot really say. Right. Even after all this time, I still don't really understand who you are or what your angle is. I answer for my own actions. I don't hide behind some faceless organization. It's interesting that these are my two options. I'm going with this one. I have not deceived you. I told you exactly who I was. Rejoice Layton. Right. Hmm. And off she goes. Understood. Keep the peace. And I will keep my end of the bargain. Right. So we just have to not let there be a war. Continue. How far along is Cronell's investigation? If you know anything about that. A confrontation is imminent. They have followed in your footsteps. Oh boy, so they're tracking me too. As your investigation reaches a climax, so does theirs. They are your shadow. Arm yourselves. Armor yourselves. Right. Literally, I suppose. Continue. Protect their targets. Violence may be unavoidable, but we can limit the casualties. When will they make their move? Where? Are they after Ruby, or are they after Titus and his gang? Soon. I do not know precisely. They have cut off all communication, you see. Ah. They know I've been feeding you information. Oh, good. Continue. One last thing, Lieutenant Dubois. I've given the matter much thought and come to this conclusion. You're not an amnesiac. You're insane. She starts the engine. Well, thank you for that insight. Uh, continue? I know. 
because I, too, am insane. I just hide my illness better. And I'm rich. <laughs> I suppose that helps. Isn't everybody a little insane? You're over-radiated? How do you keep it together? Goodbye, Joyce Element, Monsieur. Goodbye, Rejoice Layton. Goodbye, nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. <laughs> I mean, we already know she's over-radiated. She's discussed how many times she's been through the pale. I'm overexposed, baby. My travels take me through the pale dozens of times a year. I've got the longing. And I've got it bad. She points to her heart. Continue. She would die to return to it. The pale. The past. Anything one can return to. Right. That sounds about right. How do you keep it together? The same strict psychological regimen the 8th Admiral developed when he crossed the Pale and discovered this Isola. The Volta Domar. It's used by inter travelers and other troubled souls, even to this day. Can you tell me any more about it? I would love to have a thought about it. Continue. You could use a little of it yourself. I know, right? Uh... Isn't everybody a little insane? No, Detective. No one's as insane as you. <laughs> Don't flatter me now. Continue. Don't worry, madame. I am very sane. <laughs> Thank you for that, Kim. Well, she did just specifically tell me that I, she's told me who she is. She's rejoiced Leighton. I wish it wasn't so long ago that we had the conversation that brought this up, because I don't remember a lot of the details. But I'm going to go with this one. Watch out for yourselves. They will strike soon. Secret task complete. Find solution to strike deadlock. I suspect that means that I just completed a task before it was assigned to me. That's... I've, last time I completed a secret task, I think that's what it was. Continue. The lieutenant watches her boat grow smaller on the bay. Its white sails fluttering. Continue. You wonder what Everard has to say about this. Yeah. Continue. Slowly, the sails turn gray-blue as more oxygen gets between you. That is how it goes. Oh boy, okay, well, apparently I shouldn't have stopped, started off with the big one, but I also didn't fully comprehend what I was telling her about when I told her about it. I didn't even tell her about the borscht. Man. Okay, well, that's done. Right, right, the update here is the secret task is complete. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Hi. You didn't have any new conversation options, so I assume that means I can't ask you about Ruby. It seems really important all of a sudden. I'm going to ask again. Oh, the sea's going to calm down soon. I can feel nope. it. Nope. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, um... Isabel? Isabel, hi. Isabel, hi. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? The, yes, that. Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. You emphasize that in an odd fashion. Did you hear her continue? Because she's blind, which you seem to have forgotten. I, I did forget that. Um, I, I, I did, I did forget that. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Um, right, right. Okay, oh, but you, because you're blind, right? Okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? Just sort of brush aside the part that I did the faux pas thing? It's not an apology, exactly. He's a sharp one. She says to herself and runs her hand across the washboard. Continue. She's being evasive. She knows something. Clearly, continue. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. He points east. Continue. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. She turns to him. You know something. We're here to help. This is like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. What? What? <laughs> this isn't about the union, you know. You don't have to worry about retaliation. The, the man locked himself in the woodshed? We just need to help her come out. D why? How have I forgotten so much about what's happened in this game? Because that didn't even sound familiar to me. Hmm. Uh, 
are we here to help? Like, I feel like we're trying to stop the war, but we are definitely trying to find Ruby because we think that she committed the murder, and thus she needs to take responsibility for this instead of, you know, the whole population of the city. But, huh. So I can say this, but I don't think she's going to see it that way. I don't understand this one. I don't remember this, unfortunately. That's that's on me, I'm afraid. It's just been too long since I started playing this game. I'm going to start here. I, that you are, Dark Omen. Help yourselves and your organization. Help the storm clouds gather on the horizon. She shakes her head. I see. You know something, but you've decided not to tell us. Okay, but we'll be back later if we find anything suspicious. Okay. Useful. I think that there's really no point in beating around the bush. She has decided not to tell us. It's only fair. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? Continue. I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. The lieutenant turns to you. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others, too. That is a fair point. Can I look around the shack without dismissing Kim, though? Okay. We'll get him off then. All right, all right. Nothing new right here. I almost wonder if I should be. Wait, I've got that's right. I got a new thought in here. The Insulindian miracle. Before I get distracted, here we go. Oh, it's another eight-hour one. Oh no. You were reminded of a poem somewhere deep inside you, the translation of which you don't remember. Nulla sara cambiato della luce. It begins. Colori come grigio e marone. Tutti stampati uno sul altro. Trovai un vuoto, una macchia bianca. This is Italian, isn't it? Gli altri guardarono. guardarono. C'è bella giornata, c'è bel tempo, ma senti la rotiv rotativa. I don't speak Italian. I don't know Italian pronunciation. I murdered that, I'm pretty confident, and I have no idea what I just said. You were reminded of it when you heard about the discovery of Insulinde. But what does it mean, and how do you know it by heart? Great questions. Yes, great questions indeed. Okay, okay. Um, what was I, why did I go in here initially? Right, Koldamamadakwa. If I need my perception, I wonder if I should have been finishing out on Koldamamadakwa, but it's too late now, I can't finish it today. Unless I stay up really, really late. Plus, then I'd have to go back in my thought cabinet and start debating on which thought to, to clean out this time. Um, can I go in here without Kim leaving? Yes, I can! Kim, welcome to the cabin. Maybe. Kim, not welcome to the cabin. Never mind, Kim. Not welcome to the cabin. Okay, so there's a new thing I can interact with here. There's a plank. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. Oh boy, okay, continue. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Well, I guess let's move that board aside then. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in here? Search through the sand and sawdust. Oh, I don't want to stick my hand in there. Leave, oh, what's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. There sure might. Continue. Something bad. Someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. The murder weapon? Search through the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. What is it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. Continue. A nine millimeter bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. Like your own Villiers pistol, for example. Right. This bullet isn't for a breech loader like the murder weapon? It is not. The floorboard isn't interested. Maybe the washerwoman is. You have enough to confront her with. Do I? I found a bullet in my cabin. Do you have anything to say on the matter? Continue. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded, ready to fight some cops. That's a fair point.
continue. Hold in the bullet. You get the feeling. This isn't ammunition against you. It's for herself. That's... Yes. Yes, that's... If you're stockpiling ammunition to fight the cops, you don't wrap up a single bullet and hide it individually. No. Hand-eye coordination had it wrong. I think Empathy has it right on this one. Okay. Okay. I'm back, Kim. Hello. Can I actually check in with you about this, or do I have to just talk to Isabel yes. directly about it? Okay. Seems I have to talk to Isabel directly. Ask about Ruby in the village. You found a bullet in the washerwoman's shack? Ask her about it. <laughs> Look around, maybe get into the shack somehow. How would I possibly manage that? <sighs> okay. All right. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I hope she's still going to let me stay in the shack after this. Why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? Damn that girl. She murmurs softly. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. Continue. A bullet? The lieutenant turns to you and gives you a little nod, then turns to the washerwoman. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Clearly. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one, either. She shakes her head. You rented the room to her? Yes. I let my room to that ruby girl. She speaks slowly, wringing out a rag after a long silence. Her hands move into the water bucket. Some water sloshes over the edge. As I've done before, when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude, I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. Yeah, you have. You welcomed me, after all. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? Last Friday. Last Friday. That's when I showed up. So she came to bunker down when I showed up in town, but all I did was, you know, party all weekend. But then on Monday, Kim showed up, and Ruby took off. I didn't read the thing. Her wrinkled hands needs... Uh, her wrinkled hand needs a blue rag in the water. Continue. She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenant. She's seen her hiding out from trouble before. But this seems different. Sure does, doesn't it? Continue. That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. The lieutenant takes out his familiar blue notebook. Okay. You said she left on Monday? It's the room... Ex is the room exactly as she left it? Aside from the fact that I've been sleeping in it. Uh, what is she like, Ruby? Why do you think she left a bullet there? I heard she was a heavy drinker with anger issues. You ever witnessed that kind of behavior? Did she have any technical equipment with her, like radio stuff? Where did she go? Okay. So start at the beginning. Said she left on Monday? Yes. Early with the dogs. Around 8 o'clock, I think. Right. That's about the time that I came out of my stupor. Is the room exactly as she left it? I mean, it seems dumb to be even be asking you this since I'm staying in there, but let's do it anyway. I cleaned it. Like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. Continue. The truth, sire. Thank you, drama brain. What is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. She rubs her cold hands together. Yeah, I mean, I'd imagine doing your doing the washing. Well, not all day, every day, first off, but particularly at nine o'clock in January. PM, this is. Must be pretty rough on the hands. Continue. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cross a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. Just in the room? I suppose that's why the thing about technical equipment and radio stuff comes up. Because what could she have been doing in there? 
Why do you think she left a bullet there? Left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back towards her shack, thinking. You could ask her about your hunch, that it was a desperate measure. See if she thinks Ruby fits the bill. I could. It'll be uncomfortable, but this whole thing's uncomfortable. I have a possible explanation in my mind, and I also don't have the option to not bring it up, so... I do tell. A seagull flies overhead. Obviously a bad omen. It's an exit plan. On second thought, I'd rather not say. It's not something I want to think about. <sighs> it's an exit plan. Exit from what? Her life... The world, this, spread your hands. The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. Continue. No, she's a fighter. She tilts her head to the side, looking up at you, deep in thought. Not a quitter, like you sometimes get, son. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Continue. She really believes that. Got it. Well, she did specifically say that she had never seen Ruby have any... What is it? Gruff one, but not violent. I heard she was a heavy drinker with anger issues. You ever witnessed that kind of behavior? I guess heavy drinker with anger issues does not necessarily mean violent. Let's go ahead and ask about it. Nothing of the sort. Sure, she was no stranger to the bottle. She fit in that way. But I only knew her to have a beer on the beach while watching the sunset. She shakes her head. Continue. She isn't what you call a drunk. Even offered me some from time to time. Said it was part of the communal life. But I never saw her lose control of herself the way some people do. Interesting. Hmm. Either she's very good at hiding it or... I wonder if we're actually dealing with somebody else who was responsible for this particular crime of passion. If it, Maybe it wasn't that. I don't, <clears throat> Did she have any technical equipment with her, like radio stuff? Not that I knew of, though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. She brushes her forehead with the back of her hand. Water drips to the ground. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. In fact, I am. Continue. She may simply have kept the equipment elsewhere. Maybe. All right, where did she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. Heavy boots. Continue. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. Possible. Yeah. Continue. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Her tone is without malice. She's just stating the facts as she sees them. I'll never find her. Hm. Continue. I wouldn't worry about that, man. We are persistent. It seems to be my main character trait. The one unchangeable thing at the root of my nature is that I don't give up on things, except for when I do. Further up the coast we go, then. But that place is huge. She's like a, she's a needle in a haystack. Wipe your brow. Man, I was really hoping she'd be hiding in this village. Are you sure she didn't go somewhere more pleasant and less wet? <laughs> Whole bunch of whining possibilities here. Yeah, I think I just accept it. Further up the coast we go, then. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. She drops the rag into the bucket. It's clean now. Continue. The fell electric mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. Well, okay, Inland Empire. That seems to be coming out of nowhere, but sure, thanks. I guess I appreciate the suggestion. I'm guessing this is only highlighted because I haven't chosen it before, and all the options inside will be the same. Let's just make sure. What more do you want to know about that poor girl? Nothing. Enough about Ruby. I had other questions. Yes. Let's hear those other questions. She looks around as spring snow starts falling lightly on the fishing village. I'm off. One thing, officer. Huh? If you do find her, please go easy on her. I'll do my best. She looks around. The air is getting colder. 
She really means it. It's an honest plea. Continue. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll see what we can do. Oof. Oof. Okay, all right. The mural. I know exactly where that is. It's the one that that ki guy was showing his kid when I went and talked to him. The same complex that uh, the Sunday friend was standing outside of before I did that taking on the responsibility re responsibility thing. Except that I, of course, did not take on the responsibility as uh, the government was quick to point out. I have four skill points now. Man, okay, all right, okay. And the Jamrock Shuffle is nearly complete, but not complete. All right, I'm going to leave it off here, I think. There is plenty to do, and I al I'm almost worried that I'm pursuing this too quickly. I kind of regret the fact that I jumped straight to the end with Joyce and didn't get to ask her about other things. Not, I don't know if there would have been anything else important there, but I, I skipped stuff by mistake, you know? I don't like that. I don't like it. I'm going to have to go through here and figure out what I want to do next, and I'm going to try and do it without making you watch the entire process this time. So, yeah, I'll try and figure that out before next time. And then it might be time to go poking at that mural, I guess. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.